you said they have to exit via those pathways, and we have to. I think that's why a lot of people get sick is because they are constipated, or there could be kidney problems, or things like that, or they're not drinking enough water, so they're not releasing fluids and things like. As far as that goes, yes, absolutely. So this is just to reiterate. In phase one, your body pulls the stored toxins from your tissues and cells and puts them into your bloodstream. So this is phase one, liver detoxification, and that's what's important to know about it. It's the, it's the wash cycle. You're pulling everything out. You're pulling all the toxic substances out, but they're not out of your body yet. These cytochrome P450 enzymes have been well studied, and this, it, this slide is just to show you some of the proportions of the different cytochrome P450 enzymes and the ones that have been studied the most so far. This is not hippie science, which is why I put in this slide. It's to show you this is in the heart of science. This has been well researched, and it's not something that we're speculating about. It's something that's real. And then these, again, there are some common medications, and you can see on the right-hand side that the bulk of um, the bulk of medications are metabolized by the CYP three A four and three A five cytochrome P four fifty genes. And again, this isn't a slide to scare you. I'm just trying to show you that that there there's much that's known and um, about how these drugs are metabolized. And because there's much that's known, they're able to start looking and saying, ah, well, if this is metabolized this way, then uh, maybe we can uh, make a different drug that's metabolized a little differently that might work a little bit better for somebody who has different genetics. And again, we had a wonderful lecture by Colleen Fogarty Draper on nutrigenomics in March, in early April, in March, I think it was. And if you haven't listened to that, it's a, it's a great introduction to nu- the study of nutrigenomics because right now, trying to figure out why do some people do better on a high fiber diet and some people do better on a vegetarian diet and some people do better on a higher fat diet. And they're also really looking at drug metabolism to see what are the genes, and these are genes uh, that we're looking at, cytochrome P450 enzymes that are controlled by specific genes, and uh, they're, they're developing drugs and tr- trying to develop drug testing to see who, which drugs will work most effectively on which person. In phase two liver detoxification, this is our rinse cycle. We're going to take the active fat-soluble compound that was pulled out of the tissue in phase one, and what we're going to do is add another molecule to it because what we've gotten so far is something that's fat-soluble, and fat-soluble substances don't move out of the body that easily. That's one of the reasons that we use fat-soluble drugs so much, and we use pesticides that are fat-soluble because they can enter into cells. They go right through the cell membrane of a cell and so that they can be metabolized. So when you're working with a pesticide, for example, you want it to be able to go right into the nervous system and into the tissues of that specific insect in order to be effective. Well, they go right into our tissues too. And so we... We, but we want to get rid of them. You know, oil and water don't mix that well, and most of our body is water-based. Um, a lot of our body is water-based. And so we add another molecule to the end of this fat-soluble molecule that we've just pulled out of storage. We add a water-soluble molecule at the end of it to make the whole molecule water-soluble so then it becomes inactive and we can excrete it through our stool in bile, and we can also excrete it from through our kidneys via the urine. And um, the common, some of the common molecules that are used for that are um, glucuronic acid, different forms of sulfur, and glycine. Uh, and 
one of the interesting things about glucuronic acid is that when some, as Heidi was saying before, when somebody's constipated, um, glucuronic enzymes start elevating, and that's not a good thing. Um, so this, the glucuronic acid system gets blocked when people are, are too constipated. So that's a little bit about about that. And then how this applies to all of us is that we've got people who are canaries in the coal mine. They have blocked phase one and phase two. Most often we see people who have blocked phase two enzyme systems. And these are the people I was mentioning before that you'll start, you probably know, you may even be one of these people. There are people who come into my office and they say, I'm sensitive to virtually every food. I'm sensitive to virtually every drug. I'm sensitive to supplements. I can't tolerate a 21st century lifestyle. I can't go to movies because people are wearing perfumes and things. And it also manifests as uh, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, um, people who feel worse when they fast or do a detox. Um, and also, this can be significantly blocked in people who are ill or who are breaking down muscle mass or who are losing lots of weight. Um, in fact, Heidi did her master's thesis, and part of it was really aimed at the fact that when people lose a lot of weight, if they don't do something to help mobilize the toxins out of their body, they can get pretty sick. Correct? Yes. And another addition to what you're talking about with phase one and phase two, you briefly touched on it, is the importance of specific nutrients. And when we have people who have the standard American diet and they're not getting specific things like B12, folic acid, uh, nice and the B vitamins uh, for phase one and for phase two, some of the amino acids, glycine, taurine, glutamine, they're not going to have proper functioning phase one and phase two. The other side of that coin is somebody who has malabsorption, and they may be eating these good foods, but because of a compromised digestive system, they're not absorbing these nutrients, which is why a lot of people don't have the energy as far as production of ATP, which is uh, energy, and other functions that we're talking about in relation to phase one and phase two. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk more about all that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, we're seeing more and more canaries in the coal mine. We're generations into uh, poor food, stressed out lifestyles, uh, uh, compromised uh, genes because genes are very plastic. They're not set in stone and when we're under a lot of stress, we don't eat well, when we're exposed to different chemicals, those genes get expressed differently and so instead of expressing in a really healthful way, they start expressing in a really ill way, which is no fun for people who don't feel well. Uh, so let's start looking at the foods that might be able to affect how all of this works. Um, you may or may not know, some of you may or may not know, but I had a kidney transplant about two and a half years ago, and I'm not allowed to eat grapefruit anymore, which is one of a uh, food that I totally love. And the reason is is that I have to take um, anti-rejection medications, and if I if I was to start eating grapefruit or drinking grapefruit juice, I would have to do the same amount every day 